Good day to all. Welcome to the Sportsline Podcast on CHCH. So very pleased that you've checked in. I'm Bubba O'Neill. Now, as we love to promote, Southern Ontario and the Golden Horseshoe in particular is a stronghold for outstanding athletes, coaches, officials, and executives. For years, those roles have been dominated by men, but folks, times are changing. Now, when it comes to this particular sport, Football Ontario have become pioneers and leaders to provide education, guidance, inspiration, and networking opportunities opportunities for women and gender minorities in football. One year ago, the Women's Football Conference debuted at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton and boasted 25 speakers and over 70 in-person attendees. In just a couple of weeks, year two kicks off, and I'm pleased to chat about it. I'm really happy to introduce the likes of Football Ontario's Director of Development and Administration, Emily Todd. I'm telling you, this is outstanding. I'm really excited for you guys. You're on the breakthrough of something that I think is said pioneering that I think is interesting for women interesting for men and I just think growth at any time whether it's men or women in a particular sport is good news for you 100 percent. I'm really excited to be back for the second year and like you said it's it's the women's football conference but to be able to offer those opportunities to men women gender minorities anyone just to promote the sport and get more people involved is mm-hmm. ultimately our goal and certainly what tell me a little bit about the the actual conference and what got behind it before we even go to where we're going in a couple of weeks what got behind edition number one for sure so the conference founder is coach taylor mcintyre mm-hmm. so she's got a laundry list of amazing things that she's done in football. She Mm -hmm. did the CFL Women in Football program with the Blue Bombers. She's a receivers coach with the McMaster Marauders. She's a Team Ontario women's tackle coach and she wanted to provide that same opportunity to other women in football. Mm -hmm. So to be able to get them all together to network, learn about opportunities in the space, but then also looking to that next generation of up and comers that, you know, can see football careers as a possibility for them. What about you though? What about me? How'd you get involved? So I got involved because I'm good friends with Taylor and she had this idea for the conference and she reached out to me and asked if it's something I'd be interested in. And Mm -hmm. I have more of the like administration operations background in football. Mm -hmm. So we kind of teamed up together. She's got more of the playing and coaching experience. Mm -hmm. And again, I've had the opportunity to work with some really great young female football athletes. Mm -hmm. And again, just want them to see that this is a role that I didn't think would be possible for me, but Mm -hmm. that you know, opening those doors for them is really important. Why have those doors open right now? Why is this the time to host these kind of events? And not just for for football, but for all male dominated sports. Yeah, for sure. I think so for football specifically, my first kind of major role in football was a couple years ago with the Team Ontario women's tackle football team. Mm -hmm. So before that, I hadn't really seen women's tackle football and Football Canada hosted a national championship. So I think having that on the national stage for 15, 16, 17 year old girls, it was really huge and showed that there was a demand for it and that there were female athletes that want to play girls football. Now, there's always been girls that play co-ed, whether they're playing on their boys high school teams or in their community teams. But I think that was really driven by Football Canada to see that there was a demand for it. And then I think, you know, as we spoke about the PWHL and seeing the success of that league, just showing that, you know, women's sports is really growing and there is a demand for it. So I think, again, in football, we're still trying to catch up again to have those mm-hmm. professional leagues for women. But I think it's it's really grown for sure. And, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because the women's professional, women's hockey league, the, it's, it was out there and it tried diff, different incarnations, different leagues. It, some with some mild success, but it never really seemed to attract the attention of most important sponsors and television broadcasters. And now it is attracted because these people are on board. It's attracted people. It's attracted people filling seats in arenas and people watching on television as well, too. When it comes to the sport of football, though, and this is where I I ask you as a challenge here, football has this machoism male dominated sort of mentality is that a challenge for you i've been pretty fortunate in the positions that i've had i definitely see it Mm -hmm. and i respect the football culture and kind of like again that like machoism that's one of the reasons i got into it Mm -hmm. um obviously i looked up to different men in my life that played football or coached football and that's something i really appreciated about it Mm -hmm. but it's definitely something that 
you know, we're working to change and kind of change the narrative of, you know, women belong in the sport. They have the experience, they have the expertise, the knowledge that they can share. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been pretty fortunate in having some really great male mentors and role models in this space that mm -hmm. have seen, you know, that I have value and that I have something that I can contribute. Mm -hmm. So I'm really fortunate in that sense. I know it hasn't been the case for everyone, mm -hmm. which is why I'm trying to now in my leadership position with Football Ontario, mm -hmm. open those doors for other women who maybe didn't have that same experience. Well, let's just let people know right now on a Sunday I'm sitting on a couch very much like this with a football in my hand and probably a couple of snacks as well too you're doing the same thing on Sundays too aren't you I am so <laughs> NFL for sure but like a huge CFL fan so mm -hmm. huge tie cats fan I had the opportunity to work with them at training camp and mm -hmm. I love it my mm -hmm. Week weekend is like full of football, whether I'm, you know, with Football Ontario at an event mm -hmm. or I'm promoting the conference or just, again, anything I can to be involved in football. I don't have much of a life outside of that. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and, and there's some family background as well, too. Yeah, for sure. So my uncle uh, actually got rehired to coach at the University of Guelph. He's the O-line coach and he's coached football his entire life. My mm -hmm. two older cousins played, one of them played in the CFL. So that's kind mm -hmm. of how I got into it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I went to Western University, I reached out to the head coach, Greg Marshall, and asked mm -hmm. if I could volunteer with the team or be involved somehow. And he made me the assistant equipment manager. So I was there for three years on the sidelines, helping out with the team, doing anything I could. And just, I was there like every day, every practice, every game fell in love with it. And mm -hmm. that really sort of drove me to where I am today. Did you drive right into that job or was that something that you needed to just sort of observe and get into uh, again? And I don't know, maybe many of those players were like, who are you? A hundred percent. That was definitely the reaction <laughs> when I first started. I was incredibly nervous. I hadn't done it before. I just, I took a risk. Again, I was really fortunate that my uncle and Coach Marshall had a good relationship. And my mm -hmm. uncle kind of said, like, she loves football. Like, just give her a chance. <laughs> just mm -hmm. give her something to do. Mm -hmm. um, but once I got more comfortable with it, the coaches were amazing and super welcoming. Same with the players. And I just really felt like I was a part of the team. And they really appreciated mm -hmm. whatever I did for them. You talked about that World Cup sort of thing that happened in Ottawa, I guess, last year. What was that again? Was that a risk as well, too, for Ontario football or just a feeler to see what the interest was out there? For sure. So I would say in the first year more so. So in 2022, it was held in Regina. So that was mm -hmm. the first year that tournament ever ran. Mm -hmm. um, but it was full contact, women's tackle, six aside football. Um, so again, it was just, it was really great to see that event happen because I think going into it, we knew it wasn't going to be perfect and we were still trying to figure it out it was the first time for the event but again it really showed everyone that like women want to play women want to coach we need to have these events going forward and after that event so Ontario hosted the event last year like you mentioned in Ottawa mm -hmm. so we were able to put forth two women's tackle teams so huge growth from year one mm -hmm. and the tournament grew from five to eight teams just in a year so just to see that growth over the year was amazing and um, looking forward to it again this summer. Is there something maybe on a North American level because as we talk about the infancy of tackle football for women in Canada I long know and I've figured I've found out that women's tackle football in the United States has been going on for decades now. Yeah, I think, um, again, my main focus is at the youth level, but I know, I think a couple years ago, we had the the IFAF International Championships. We had Team Canada there, so another women's tackle opportunity. So I think it's really good to get the youth more involved at a younger age to right. kind of show them that pathway. Mm -hmm. So then these, you know, Team Ontario athletes can see that as a future for them, that they can play for Team Canada, that they can play women's tackle football, or they can even get into the coaching or operations or officiating route. Right. Do you have a favorite player? <sighs> That's a hard question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have a favorite player. Tie Cats obviously is my favorite team. Okay. I don't have a favorite player right now. <laughs> okay, and I'm I'm, I'm I'm setting you up there a little bit. Okay. I'm okay. setting you up Fair here, enough. right? Fair enough. I'm just trying to hand off the ball to you a <laughs> little sure. bit, right? Now, in the, and I say that because do, when you are talking to these youths that are interested in, whether it be flag or tackle football, 
What are you finding? Is it they're looking at particular males and saying, I want to play like that individual or I want to be like that particular quarterback? I want to be, you know, uh, Zach Caleros or Patrick Mahomes or whatever. I think Patrick Mahomes has definitely come up a lot. That's I'm sure. Their, yeah, that's their sort of like go to. Huh? Um, but I think, you know, in the flag space specifically, Deanna Flores plays for the Mexican team and she's a huge name now in football, specifically flag and women's football. Like she's been on like NFL commercials and mm. I know she had a big role to play in the Super Bowl so I've heard that name from our athletes a lot which is really great and mm -hmm. you know the coaches kind of show them those videos and just again to show them that it's possible mm -hmm. and that they can achieve the same kind of level of success that she has. I'm going to name a couple names here. Kim Ng, she was the first women's general manager in Major League Baseball. Chantel Vallée, right here in Hamilton, the first head coach and general manager of a professional basketball team. Becky Hammond, she's long been an assistant with the Spurs, now in the WNBA, eight years as an assistant, longest ever, uh, and someone by the likes of Amanda Ruler, who went to McMaster and is with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Seattle Seahawks coaching. When and we talk about role models that are males, those are women that are not only playing. And I think this is what's wonderful about your conference is that it's not just the players. There's spaces for executives, there's spaces for officials, and there's spaces for coaches. Mm -hmm. For sure. Right. Yeah. And that's what you're trying to get across to people as well, too. Yeah. So that's, again, my passion. I didn't. I played like a semester of flag football. I didn't have a huge playing career and I don't have the background or expertise to coach, but I'm just so passionate about it. And again, I know the game, so I do have skills to offer. And I think that's, again, like you said, a big goal of the conference is showing athletes that, you know, even if you play for a little bit and then you graduate as an athlete, you can give back to your community and coach. You can be an official, you can be an administrator, an executive, and seeing more and more women in the CFL, the NFL, the OUA, it it does show them that it's possible mm -hmm. and that there are those positions available for women. And mm -hmm. again, that's the goal of the conference. And I think that's fantastic. And you're what I what I'm seeing as well too when I look at the list of people that are contributing that there are people that are giving back as well too and coming and speaking at your conference about their experiences. For sure. So we have a really great group of speakers this year. We have a lot of OUA and U sport level coaches. Mm -hmm. So again, to see that they see value in this and see that it's important for more women and girls to feel included in football and to show them that they can do it, I mm -hmm. think is really great. Um, and then we have some amazing female speakers as well. Um, again, some women who have experience in the CFL. We have um, Tara Marakic, who's on the board of directors for Football Canada. She's an official in Quebec. She's played flag football, like just the accolades of all of these people combined is, is amazing. I want to get some for broadcasting as well, too, right? Like that, we that, really do. <laughs> that, that's the next level, too. I, sure. I mean, I can think right here at home, uh, someone like a Kate Bearness, right, who is now the, she's the head of the panel on TSN for the CFL. And she, and I'll tell you just because I know her personally, she knows her stuff. Like, there's, there's no questioning about, and I do believe this is, again, stereotype and things we got to get rid of, that she's just there because she looks good. She knows her stuff, and I think that's the best part about what you guys are doing out there is that you're filling people with education. For sure. I love listening to Kate as well. I agree. Like, mm -hmm. I love listening her, to her analyze and talk about the athletes. I had the opportunity to meet her at the CFL Awards, too, mm -hmm. and she's just an amazing – and for sure, definitely someone, like, I look up to mm -hmm. if that ends up being a route that I go. But, mm -hmm. again, showing young women and girls that there are – so many women in this space in all different aspects mm -hmm. is, is really important. For Ontario football, obviously we've been around for some time and representing the sport here in the province and there, I know there's Football Canada as well too. Uh, are we seeing this kind of uh, women's conferences in other provinces as well? So not yet, but we were fortunate last year and this year as well to have some participants and some speakers from other provinces. Mm -hmm. um, again, because of my role with Football Ontario and mine and Taylor's relationship with some of the coaches in other provinces, we were able to draw people in, which was really great. Mm -hmm. um, I think long term, our goal would be to make it more Canada wide. So mm -hmm. whether that be partnering with Football Canada and just promoting it more on the national stage, mm -hmm. I think would be really great just to make it even bigger and, and better. You talked about the Thai Cats. They've got some involvement in this as well, too. 
they do. So they're hosting us again for the second year. And obviously, mm-hmm. I'm biased. They're my favorite CFL mm-hmm. team. I know the people there really well. And again, just to see their support of this just really shows mm-hmm. why they're my favorite team, that mm-hmm. they see value in this, that you know they're offering up their facilities to us. They're giving everyone a stadium tour. They're allowing us to use the field for on-field sessions. So um, having their support is, is huge, and we couldn't do it without them. And I saw some videos and some pictures that you flipped to me. And, and I, I'm not going to lie here i could not help but notice the eyes emotion the 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 expressions the excitement out of many of these women that were touring the facility that were on the football field that you know something like myself i'm a broadcaster i'm interviewing the players i'm there you know what sometimes that stuff doesn't even phase me but for a lot of these women that have never been like maybe they've been in the seats and now they're on the turf at Tim Hortons Field. It's got to be a big deal. It's pretty huge. And again, we want to create the best experience we can for everyone at the conference. The speakers, the attendees. Mm-hmm. Selfishly, I want to make them Cats fans. Mm-hmm. So if that happens, that's great. Sure. But again, just to give them that sort of like VIP experience that mm-hmm. the conference can provide. And again, to have the support of the Cats is mm-hmm. amazing. You listed off some of the pe- some of the people that are involved. Like I see Coach Potasic from McMaster is involved. Who else is involved? So we also have Coach Galloway from uh, Wilfrid Laurier. Mm-hmm. We have uh, Sonia Rohde, who is based in Ottawa. She did the women in football program with the Red Blacks. Mm-hmm. Um, I mentioned Tara Marakic. We have Emily Clark, who's a CFL official. Um, we have our honored guest speaker is Laurence Pombriand, who works at the CFL and Mm -hmm. also plays for Team Canada. We have Aaron Craig, who works with the Edmonton Elks. So again, a really great mix of men, women, um, community level coaches, CFL, OUA. So again, just bringing everyone together for the conference. And when you knock on their door for a little bit of help, they're all coming running, aren't they? I mean, it, it looks like the numbers are up this year. Yeah, they're really excited. And again, they it's great because these people see value Mm -hmm. in this conference and they want to contribute and see the sport grow any way they can. Mm -hmm. So we're really grateful for all of them. You brought up her name earlier and I kind of want to ask, I know she's not here to speak for herself, Zerba, you brought up the name Taylor McIntyre. Tell me a little bit about Taylor. Taylor's amazing. She's a a trailblazer in this space. She played tackle football when she was in high school. She played on the boys team because the women's, there wasn't a women's team when she was in high school. Um, She coaches at the community level with Cambridge. She coaches team Ontario women's tackle. She completed the her program with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers she's just she's really done it all and you can tell how passionate she is about this and how Mm -hmm. much she cares Um, she's amazing it's been amazing working with her again this year and I'm just really fortunate to have a great relationship with her let's run through some of the details there and how can people get involved if they'd like to become and you have to be women get out there football is the greatest sport ever (laughs) How do people get involved and uh, tell me a little bit the dates and stuff like that? Of the For event. sure. Yeah. So our conference this year is March 1st through 3rd mm-hmm. at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Um, the Friday evening is, it, it all kicks off. It's our networking portion. So mm-hmm. it's 5 till 9 p.m. Um, we're able to be on the club level of Tim Hortons Field. So where the CFL Hall of Fame is, which is amazing as well. Um, so that night we have just some introductions, but mainly that's a networking piece. Mm-hmm. So for anyone to kind of, you know, learn about new opportunities, meet other people at the conference. Um, and then Saturday is our coach clinic session. So we have a bunch of different breakout rooms. Something we really wanted this year was for people to be able to kind of tailor the conference experience to what works best for them. Mm-hmm. So if you want to learn more of the X's and O's, if you want to learn more about people's journeys, you can do that at the conference. Mm-hmm. We also have a panel presentation. So we learn about different perspectives from women in football. And then Sunday, we've partnered with the Hamilton Football Officials Association mm-hmm. to run an officiating clinic because mm-hmm. we can't have football if we don't have officials. That's right. So we're doing that. And then we have an on-field session as well. So mm-hmm. you can kind of put some of those coaching skills and drills that you've learned into Mm -hmm. practice and then it all wraps up on Sunday. I think that's the best part though is that they're on the as I said I just talked about it earlier but the fact that they're on the field and they get to put all the work into practice and the excitement of throwing the football around and just being there and being together and you talked about networking and and what an important part that has become of events like this is just getting together and learning other people's experiences. Um, I I think that's an, an important part for you guys as well too is that It may be someone in business. It may be someone, as you said, on the medical side or the training side that they all get to get get together. 
for sure. And some that's my favorite part of it is that networking mm -hmm. portion, because I think that's where you can really hear from other people's experiences and again, meet people that maybe you wouldn't thought of before. And mm -hmm. um, again, being able to have people from different provinces, you can kind of learn about their journey, their experience, what their challenges might be and mm -hmm. how we can help them. But then also, like you said, being able to connect like a strength and conditioning coach with a current athlete or like a CFL official with anyone so it, that's my favorite part of it for sure is that networking piece and just also showing them that there are other people like you out there who have your back who want to support you and help drive you forward in your football career well emily networking is an important part of what we do here on the sports line podcast and it's been a pleasure to get to know you and understand what you're all about what football ontario is all about and what the women's football conference is all about hopefully we'll be able to get our chh cameras down there on the weekend get you a little coverage as well too you guys certainly deserve it you're opening up eyes and ears to 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 men myself you know that didn't know this was out there and more importantly as you said those young women out there that are saying you know what as we say in the in the PWHL, we're getting there a little a little behind, but we're kind of catching up. That football players, you can play, you can get out there and play. So thank you so much for coming and joining us and and bragging about your event. A of bit. course, thank you for having me. No, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Hey, folks, that's your Sports Line podcast for the day. And of course, as you know, we love talking sports. And if you do know of an athlete, team, or event to promote the Sports Line podcast, do want to hear from you. If you do like the content, and I hope you do. Please hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe button, and please comment. For the wonderful people that make the Sportsline podcast possible, thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow.